Hey, welcome to the Build Show. Steve Bazik here, and today we're on site. Guess what got delivered? You got it. Windows. Look at this baby. All right, we're talking nine feet by about six and a half feet. It's laying down on its side. It's actually going to get installed vertically on the nine foot orientation here. But I'm just going to give you a really quick breakdown of the windows that we're using in this project. So these are European windows. Obviously you can see here it's upside down, but they're made by a company called Shuka. The uh, Shuka windows are made in Europe. Lead time on these windows is probably in a 12 to 14 week range, depending on the size of the window order, how jammed up their factories are, etc. But these are a triple glazed window with an aluminum frame. The aluminum frame is a thermally broken frame. So what does that mean? It just means that Basically, the frame doesn't go from outside to inside in constant contact so that you get thermal conductivity through the frame. It actually gets broken in a couple places so that conductivity gets interrupted so we don't have that heat loss through the frame. A couple things about windows. Frame, and then this is what's called the IGU, or insulated glazing unit. The insulated glazing unit for these windows is made by a company, St. Coban, in Europe. I've actually been to their factory. I was quite fascinated. Spent the whole day there with one of their engineers touring it and got to see how these are made. But this is a triple glazed window. It's argon filled. You do have the option to fill it with krypton for an added charge. The krypton will make it a, a little bit more thermally efficient. But for this project here, the argon filled triple glazed window takes us to a U value which when translated brings us to an R value of about R7.6. So that's a little bit more than two and a half times or right about two and a half times the typical domestic double glazed window. Right. So again frame IGU, IGU goes inside the frame this is what we would term a fixed unit because there are no operable pieces to this. We'll take a walk down here around the corner and we'll look at some of the operable windows. So as we come by here, actually before we get to that operable, let's just talk about this picture window. This one actually has mutton bars in it, right? So it's not just that one big piece of glass. It has these muttons in there to develop a, a scale breakdown of that plate of glass. We're going for the modern farmhouse look here, so that works well for us. But the real thing to, to understand is, is that we actually have in between the, the pieces of glass, the three pieces of glass and the two spaces there, the spacers are in there. So a lot of times when you have simulated divided lights, is what this is called because this isn't an individual piece of glass. This is all one piece of glass with an outer piece on the outside, a spacer, another piece of glass, a spacer, and then another piece of this on the inside of the window. So it gives that simulated divided light look, but it also has those spacers in between the glass, which is really important because as I look diagonally through here, I don't get to see through those mutton bars and through those pieces of glass. So it gives it that added authentic look of a true divided light, but you get the performance of a full picture window here. Moving on down here, here's some of our operable windows that we're going to be using here. Now, the operable window, again, we have the frame, we have the IGU, but the IGU, insulated glazing unit, is not set inside the frame, inside an operable window. It's set inside what we call the sash. So you have the framework, and the sash is actually the piece that moves in and out of the windows. If you saw my other video, you'll understand the tilt-turn feature on these windows. All these operable windows here are the same tilt turn, um, have that same tilt turn feature. On the other windows, we did a UPVC triple glaze window made by Shu. In the case of this house, we're going to use their aluminum frames. Now, one of the other beauties of the Shuko product is that their hinges are what we call three axis hinges. 
So you have that framework where the sash gets set inside of it. But being a three axis hinge, it allows the sash to be adjusted laterally. So it can move left to right. It can be adjusted vertically up and down, but it can also be adjusted on that Z axis where it can go in and out. Now what's the beauty of that? Well, after we install all of these windows, we get one of the gentlemen from the window company to come out who's an expert in dealing with these windows and troubleshooting them, et cetera, et cetera. And they go through each window and basically give it a fine tuning. So they'll sit there and they'll adjust those hinges so we get the perfect placement of that sash inside the window frame. So I'm looking forward to shooting a video here, show you how we install these babies and then show you how beautiful this place looks with these windows installed. But the next step is we're going to jump over to that drafting table. We're going to talk a little bit about this. I have a corner section so we'll be able to see this in section and we'll talk a little bit more about these windows. See you in a bit. Hey everybody. Welcome back. We're inside the studio here. Just did a nice quick Windows 101 tour. Um, Windows just got delivered out at the job site. We're going to talk just a little bit about how we go from kind of inception and, and thought of the windows and how we get them laid out and organized and and such. And then I have a kind of a special surprise here for you. We actually have props today. So let's get started. Of course, we got trusty friend Big Red here to join us. Um, he's always a help. So here you can see we have, this is just a small section of the floor plan I printed out from the drawing set, but I just wanted to point out a few things when we're talking about the windows here. You know, there's, like I said before, the plans are nothing more than a map that allows myself to communicate with Brian out at the job site so that he knows what my intentions are. So how do we outline those intentions? Well, you can see here in the floor plan, obviously graphically we have windows drawn, as windows as opposed to solid wall here, right? Window, window, bank of three, another window here, and windows there. Um, but more importantly, each of these windows are keyed. So you can see this one here is 231. So that's the 31st window on the second floor is my typical nomenclature. The first number is either a B, one, two, or three, or it could be an A for attic, if we if we had an attic in this one, we actually do have an attic window. but here, this is a corner of the second floor window. So you can see 231, 225, 226, 27, 28, 29, 30. How did 31 get over here? Well, as we were designing, we made some changes. We took out a couple windows, then added a window back. So that one kind of takes on the new life. So we run through these numbers and go there. But the second part is we need to understand, well, what kind of windows are these, right? So you'll see here, on this window, 225, it's labeled as a fixed. 226 is fixed. 227 is tilt turn, right? We talked about that in a previous video, and I also have some other videos coming up where we're, we're going to take some deep dives into windows just because they're a very important aspect of what we do when we put buildings together. To get the, the understanding of what the tilt turn is, jump back to that video there where we're out, out at the ranch remodel and we talk very specifically about the tilt and the turn function and why for each of those. But here you can see tilt turn window, it's got a fixed in the middle, tilt turn, fixed, and then a pair of tilt turns that, that push in. So they also not only outline the operation, but it also tells Brian the swing. So you can see these are set up like that. So that means they swing in like this, to that position, to that position, these swing into this position, to this position. So, you know, there's a, there's a pretty heavy coordination effort as an architect when you're putting, especially the windows together. Um, you know, these windows here were ordered, it takes about a little over 12 weeks to get them. So the order gets placed, you know, before we were putting the foundation in. So you really have to have, you know, all your ducks in a row when you're doing dealing with the windows and you know for this house here we probably had upwards of about 75 80 windows so when you have a window package that large you know there's a financial implication to all of those windows that we need to make sure we're getting it right the last thing we need is 
75 windows delivered 12 weeks later. And, you know, even one of them being wrong would be a tragedy. So I, uh, I can't tell you how many times I go over and over and over in coordination effort plan versus elevation versus window schedule, um, shop drawings. So, you know, this plan, again, we have the numbers, we have them outlined as far as function, tilt, turn versus fixed. Sometimes it's just a tilt only. Um, that doesn't happen anywhere in this area. And we actually show the swing. Well, what does that look like when we jump to elevation? All right. When I jump to the elevation here, you can see, and uh, keep in mind, we'll, we'll play with these 27, 26, 28, 29, 30 windows. Those are here over the garage. So you see the 26, 27, 28, 29, and 30. They reappear. You see that the label of fixed, tilt, turn, fixed, tilt, turn, fixed, reappear. You see that the operation, there's dashed lines that go like this. All right. So whenever you have a set of dashed lines on a door, whether it's a cabinet door or a front door, window, whatever, the U.S. way of doing it is point to hinge. Point to hinge. So what does that mean? It means that if I have a window like this, this is the hinge side, so the hinges are over here, and this side here is the part of the sash that operates. Now, what makes this even more complicated is that the European convention for this is point to the strike side. So the high points are at the hinges. So it's exactly the opposite of what we would do here. So I use the U.S. convention when I'm laying this out. But when I get the shop drawings back, I really am checking to make sure that they're the exact opposite. But you can see those windows in there. Um, another thing to point out is that in some locations, we have to have tempered glass on these windows. It's uh, hazardous areas, bath areas, around stairways, anywhere where you have the ability to fall pretty easily, reach for a window, maybe your arm goes through the window. You don't want to get it, uh, you know, have any injury there. They have to be tempered. And for me, I just use bold letters and I throw it right out on top of the window so we know. And then all of this information that's here and in the plan then gets reflected back into the window schedule and they get called out to be tempered. So basically in my plans, I have three places where the window is numbered, the function is labeled, the operation is visually seen, and things like tempered or any special remarks for uh, the windows or doors would be called out. And you can see down here also in the floor plan, the words tempered being called out, right? So it's very important that we get all that information. Now, when the windows come back in the shop drawings, all of this information gets relayed. And likewise, when the windows get delivered, there's a nice little label on the window that has all this information. It'll have the tag. 226 on it. It'll be labeled as a tempered window. It'll be labeled as a fixed unit, although we don't need to. We can tell just by having the unit there. But uh, the important thing is, is that, you know, we have these series of cross references because it's a, it's a very expensive part of the building. And it's something that we can't afford to have come in wrong. I mean, if one, one window came in wrong, and we go back to the window manufacturer and he says, okay, it's not going to take 12 weeks, but it's going to take six or eight weeks to get that in. Well, that puts a pretty big hardship on our construction sequence and such that we really need to get this stuff right. So what do I have here? This is actually, let's see here, this is the outside of the window. But uh, this is a cross-section corner of the actual windows that we're using there. So you can see here. I spoke of it being triple glazed. Um, you saw in the earlier video out at the job site, we actually, when we have muttons in here, we have spacers in between each pieces of glass here. So you can't see laterally through those spaces underneath the mutton bars. Outside of window, inside of window. And then we have foam plastic uh, PVC connections there. Well, what that is, is that's a thermal break. 
We don't want this cold aluminum communicating with this aluminum on the inside because in the winter time, when the humidity is much higher in here, we'd be at the risk of getting condensation on this frame if that aluminum frame simply just went all the way through. So that's what we call thermally broken. In the window here, we have these. These are little spacers. That, these ones are called Swiss spacers. What those carry is there's a desiccant in there. And what that does is it makes sure that these cavities always stay nice and dry and that we don't build up any moisture there that would condense on any of the inside layers of that glass. You can see when I open this, right, you have a nice beefy weather stripping here. You can see down here at the bottom here. One of the other important things, features, and see it here, but we have this. So that's called the weep channel, right? So what happens in the weep channel is when these windows are closed on, on the job site, well, you have weather stripping there, but there's actually a little air space that happens in there. So any moisture or rain that comes down the windows, if it does happen to get into that crack, we have this weep hole here. So picture rain falling down the glass, goes down there. That is not weather stripped and that's intentional. And so when you open that, you have what's called that weeping channel in there, right? And then that weeping channel gets communicated. If I can pop that off, yeah. We can pop that off and you can see there's a weep. There's a weep channel right there. And then that just comes complete with this nice little hood that goes over the top. So we get a nice aesthetic closure on that. But even our windows, and remember I said this on our first control layers video, right? If you haven't seen that, make sure you jump back, check it out. But what's the number one rule in water management? Down and out, right? So even when I'm, I'm thinking globally about the project, I'm worried about down and out, but that translates, remember I said, to every detail in the project. So even when I'm picking out windows for my projects, I need to ensure that the manufacturer has exercised as much care and intent in water management that I have in the whole house, right? So that every little piece does its water management part, and then that overall creates great water management for the house in general. So that's our Windows 101 video. That's an introduction. I promise you, we got a bunch more window videos coming out. They're always they're always fun to talk about. People like to hear about them. But, um, you know, that's, that's our introduction. Um, if you haven't seen any of my previous videos, I recommend that you go back. There's there's all kinds of levels of information. Some of it's pretty fundamental. Some of it's pretty advanced stuff too. So I try and make sure that there's a really good mix in there. So there's something for everybody and uh, we can all jump up another seat or two further on that learning curve and uh, make our industry a little bit better. And then lastly, you know, I have uh, four great colleagues on the build show among others that, you know, Joey and the, and the gentleman, that uh, do the filming and film editing and stuff. They make me look uh, really, really good. But uh, my four colleagues, Matt, Jake, Wade, and Brent, they all do videos too. And uh, I, I love watching them. I learn something from every one of those guys every time uh, I watch one of their videos. So, you know, you have a great, great collection of self-education videos here. You can stay up on your industry knowledge. This is stuff that's happening today. I mean, I'm, I'm showing this video to you here, and uh, while I'm saying that, some of these windows are probably getting installed at the job site. So, so this isn't uh, historical stuff that I'm pulling out of archives to show you. This is, this is stuff that I literally thought about in the past couple months, and we're actually doing and installing right now. So anyways, that's all we got for Windows 101. Hope you enjoyed it. We'll uh, press on, and I look forward to seeing you more on the Build Show. Until then, long live our buildings.